and in August you're going to be coming back down again mm. to do a workshop. And um, you and I spoke the other night about um, some of these wonderful playwrights, and it's on American contemporary mm. classics, plays now that are regarded as mm. contemporary classics. Yeah. What is it for you about working on those beautifully written plays by writers like Eugene O'Neill, Arthur Miller, Thornton Wilder? Can you talk about why you love sure. working on those beautiful plays? Um, Americans and America, when they dream, they're the best people on the planet. Uh, but when it goes wrong, they're the worst. And uh, the, the writing that happened, say, from the 30s, through the two wars and up, and, up, until, up until the 60s, was a country coming to terms with, with the fact that the ideal might not be real, that it might not happen. Up until then, the, the dream was easily paintable and, live, and you could live inside it. But once Thor Wilder came along with Our Town, and from then on inwards, you can see the the way people, how hard people fight to keep a lie alive. And all of us do that. All of us do that. We, we, do. we have to. We have to lie to ourselves. Um, but, but somewhere along the line, the, a giant public secret started to be revealed and in, and in the American plays it, they all speak the same language, they all add up to something, something that we all know which is that dreams aren't real. Um, but the thing about Americans which makes them so, so wonderful and so terrifying is that they will not stop fighting for it and they will continually, continually drive and that makes the work of O'Neill, of Miller, of Wilder of all the so <coughs> so important and powerful for actors because you're not tapping into something light you're not tapping into something you're tapping into an entire nation's consciousness and an entire nation's unified dream and seeing and feeling where the cracks happen and then plastering over them and so in terms of raw material <coughs> for high quality actors or for high quality acting um, I'm not saying it's the only work in the world, but they've got, they've got, uh, it's like grabbing hold of a, of a live wire, holding on and getting bounced around the room until it bucks you off, uh, you know, uh, the, the, yeah, all of those plays are Rodeo Rides, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, every now and then you get to be the cowboy. <laughs> well, I must say, when we, um, uh, you did a, a workshop with us at the Sydney Theatre Company, on American contemporary classics. I'd never ever seen a workshop begun that way. <coughs> when you gave the actors the Gettysburg Address yeah. and the um, Declaration, Declaration of, of Independence. Independence, and then you pitted that against, I think, the Australian Constitution. Mm. Because opposed to this idea of just thinking that when you're actually entering into those walls, it's just a matter of an accent, it felt to me what you really did was really illuminate something about that sensibility. Oh, absolutely, and it's it's worth. I mean, I think Churchill put it best when he said that uh, that the ang the English world, of which we are, you know, partial inheritors, certainly culturally, I think there are still many things that we've inherited from that. And the United States are um, uh, uh, two cultures uh, divided by a common language, uh, which I thought was a very yeah, interesting yeah. way of thinking things. And, yes. But um, there are acute differences between Australians and, and Americans, um, psychological, mythological differences. You know, um, Robert Hughes made the wonderful point, you know, the writer, the writer of Fatal Shore, where he said that because America began as an ideal, mm. as the city on the hill, um, it's got nowhere to go but down. You can only pollute an ideal. Um, but because Australia began as the trash can of Europe, we've got nowhere to go but up. Mm. But we're meeting each other. Right. And there's a point, and it feels a lot of now I'm feeling it, you know, after having, you know, in the past five years, having done All My Sons, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, um, Of Mice and Men, all of these pieces from the 50s, I can, I can feel like we, we're, we're beginning to understand them now. But... It's in a we're, we're moving in a slightly different direction to them. Uh, yeah, I hope that makes sense. No, it yeah. totally makes sense, mm. and I think more, more than ever, yeah, where things are at at the moment, you can feel that 
mm. sense and I, I don't know if you've got many friends in America I've got several yes, and they yeah. are just utterly well my friends anyway are utterly disheartened and oh, sure. devastated sure. by what's happening in the world mm. but they will fight they will fight they, will they, fight. they definitely yeah. will fight and um, and they'll fight for the right reasons yes. and so will the other team by the way you know but that's that's the United States it's yeah it's volatile, and also, you know, um, it is worth remembering that they have a democracy, and this is democracy in action, yes. in all of its horror, horrifying potential, yes. you know. Yeah. But yeah, but that, which also makes them different to us again. You know, we we don't have that level of volatility in in this country. We we have our own awesome, classy thing, but <laughs> we really do, yeah. and it's it's very hard for other countries to understand it when they come and see our plays. You know, they sort of because we're we're so inflected. But I think it's a it's an awesome thing. It's a wonderful thing for an Australian actor to just grab hold of a culture that forces them on the front foot, that forces them to believe in something, and forces them to fight for that thing that they believe in. And um, if you can contact that in a week long workshop, uh, then that's that's a, a fire that you can fan and feed and fuel for the rest of your acting life. If you can touch just for a second what it's like, you know when. Willie Loman walks through the door and puts his hat down and says, oh boy, what's coming next? Ian, thank you so much um, for coming into our studio and being a part of it. It was just an exquisite experience for me to see a group of actors who just worked with you and there was delight living in every single one of them about what was possible. Oh, and great. I think they fell in love with the craft of acting and fell in love with what theatre means. So thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I must say that it's, got, it's, it's also a two-way street, of course. And 16th Street has, does such a beautiful job of getting people who care in for the right reasons. And, and so that those kind of moments can't happen unless you have actors who are really open and willing to, to step into the fray. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>